Okay, can you guys put your headsets and mics on? You don't need to, Seth. Just these two guys. Two pictures of these two sport lands. So I got Mr. Glenn, I got sport lands. Okay. And I got a bunch of the building. Just one second, we're doing a test. I'm sure you are. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Talk. No, oh, I can't hear you. Okay, who's who here? Uh, that's me this time. I'm okay. first on this one. Try talking again. Respective teams. Okay, but hold on. You can hear me can through hear your you. headset? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but I can't hear you. Is it, is it because you, I had been using that mic before? Doesn't matter. I can't hear the one of you. When Cody's talking, I hear an echo out. Yeah. Hold your finger. Yeah. I was gonna say you get your suit to be wet, but you probably love to. Yeah. 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 Now you're on muted. Yeah, it's muted. How about right now? Again? How about now? All right, uh, puck goes back to center ice, and looks like he's on. A, Stevenson's got a breakaway. He's got. Oh, and what a what a save! Big stop there by the young Tandy, making a huge stop for their team, and now. Okay, I still can't hear you. Let's see if Rock Lake can go the other way here. And pass to McDonald number seven. Okay, keep in mind we are live. We are live, guys, right? So keep that in mind when you're whatever you're talking about. But you can hear me? I can hear you, yeah. So you can hear me? Okay, so Cody, you talk? All right. Puck goes behind the net there. The Rock Lake defenseman will gather it up. He is going to make his way up the boards. Oh, but it looks like we got a turnover. Uh, looks like the Rock Lake defender now is wheeling up the boards. Pass to the front of the net. And looks like he's going to wind up, make a Drop. shot. Just hold on, guys. But well, now you can't hear me. Well, we can't hear. You can hear that, but they can't hear us. I don't know. That's muting me, right? No. So nothing's muted there. My volume's up. My ringer's on. 
Okay, let's just make sure this is you. That's you, okay? Okay, talk now. Theo, can you hear me? Nod your head. Can you talk? Sure. I can hear you. Can you hear Theo? Say a couple more words, Theo. Uh, show starts 4.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, can you hear Graham talk? No. No, that's the problem. I can't hear the boys talk here either. Whatever settings we had, we've got them exactly the same as you and I had. We did the test the other day, and now I don't have these guys. So what I think I'm going to do, Theo, you're hearing me, right? I'm listening is I'll keep mine live on the show too. And then when Graham throws it to you guys, when you guys go live on the stream, I'll also say you're live. Then we sense? just go from there. Yeah. So I'll have to keep my phone on. Because I don't know why. I have the settings all the same as you and I had the other day. Do we have Carrie and Scott on here yet or no? Uh, Scott can't make it. Carrie will be here any minute. He was already logged in an hour ago. He's got time change. So as long as the rest of the world can hear these guys, we're okay. Seth, can you? Oh, we should be able to do it here. Just make sure we can hear these guys. Can we talk? Me? Nothing. Oh. Behind the net. Okay, try it again, guys. Okay. All right, looks like Stevenson's going to wind up from the point, and uh, that shot is going to be blocked. Uh, Rebels are going to take control and try to get it out of their end, but not quite able to. Looks like we're going to have another attempt here at getting it out. Number 11 wheels it up the boards. And it looks like we got a race here for the puck. And looks like the Killarney team is going to win the race to the puck. He's going to be looking for an open man along uh, the boards there. there. There's Kerry. I see him now. 
Yeah, yeah for sure. Bucks. This white team, you can see on the shoulder of their jerseys, they're sponsored by McDonald's, one of my favorite fast food restaurants. And they're going to try to play the puck out of the zone. Clogged up nicely there by number 14. And chance out in front, but number five for the white team. Able to play some good defense. Are we live right now, Glenn? What's that, Gary? We're just or... testing, right? We're just testing, yeah. Graham can't hear me, can he? I can, I can hear Theo. Who was saying Graham McDonald's? Graham can hear you. I, I was saying McDonald's. Can you That's hear me, Theo? Fucking, this fucking disgusting. Hey, we're live, Theo. I thought you said we weren't live. We're, we're live, but we're not live, live. Yeah. Well, the world just heard you say that. I asked. Continue talking. I'm done talking. I'll listen. I'm listening. I'm not saying anything else. Okay, I don't know why they can't hear you, but we're okay. Okay. Sounds good. Listening, Carrie. Okay, Seth, you need to get ready. We're live in two minutes. So the problem still is we can't hear these guys, and I don't know how to change that setting. Well, I unplugged you. Okay, you guys gotta get back to where I told you to put a tape on the floor. <laughs> Theo, I don't know what's happened to, to Gary, but you can handle Kevin when he comes in, I know that. Yeah, I got some time. Okay. So these guys are going to go live. We'll have a couple of interviews, and then we'll cut to you and Kevin. Hopefully, he's in there by then, too. If not, we'll throw Gordy on. You guys ready? Yep. You bet. You're live. Welcome to our two-game pre two-hour pregame show here on ASTV Productions to get you all ready for the CSSHL game of the month here tonight at Blackjack Stewart Arena between the U17 Mill Prep Pilot Mount Hockey Academy of Buffaloes taking on the Edge School U17 Prep team. We're in Blackjack Stewart Arena right now, where the game is going to be happening at 7 p.m. I'm Graham Forsyth. I'm going to do be, be doing some play-by-play -play commentating tonight, along with my color guy, uh, Cody Wall, joining us here, as well as Seth Rock. And we're going to start off by recapping the earlier games that we saw today. Two games have been played so far in uh, today's action at Pilot Mound, Manitoba. 9-1, to one, the Edge U-17s beat the U-17 male prep Buffaloes uh, in the morning at that 10 a.m. game. And then early on in the afternoon, we saw the U-15... Uh, prep edge team to take down the U15 uh, male Buffaloes 11 to 1. Let's start off by recapping these game boys. Just the stuff you saw from both teams out there in terms of the results of the game. Uh, well, uh, looking at the, the prior two games, looked like uh, shots, getting shots on net were a bit of an issue, but uh, they looked to fix that going forward in the current game coming up. But, uh, so what are your thoughts? Yeah, both teams, teams have a lot of good speed. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, there was a lot of aggressive play. And, uh, and I thought the penalty kills were also really good. 
Just looking at it, Pilot Mound in both games getting outshot pretty heavily. Uh, we've talked about it earlier in the games today in our post game, you know, between periods. What do you think is going to have to change for Pilot Mound's U17 team to, you know, get more offense in tonight's game? One thing we kind of talked about in the prior game was uh, trying not to force it up into the crowded areas. Uh, seemed like a lot of the time Puck was getting forced into, uh, you know, areas where there was two, three guys, uh, edge players, and, uh, you know, when you're trying to force play, it doesn't often end up uh, in your favor. Yeah, you know, I saw a lot of stuff you did. Yeah, make sure you're making those good points by kicking it up the right way. Yes, well, we'll talk about the game coming up tonight later on in the show as we end off this two-hour show. But uh, talking about just the, the things that, you know, stood out from Pilot Mound today, I know there wasn't uh, a lot of positives from their team, but out of the positives, the, the small positives, what were some things that you took away from Pilot Mound's game? Uh, well, Ma Pilot Mound managed to get uh, the first goal of the season with their... Uh, you know, early in the season, there's only their second game, managed to get one on the board. And uh, in fact, we actually have uh, Pilot Mounds U17 goal scorer uh, on the show later on today. Uh, Zach, Jack is going to be joining us on the show. Yeah, you know, I really like the all of my I just well, we're going to be talking to Jack Smith in just a moment here, but first we're going to be sending it to our first commercial break of the show. The one and only goal scorer from Pilot Mods U17 has joined us right after this commercial break. You're watching this two-hour pregame show here on ASTV Productions for the CSSHL Game of the Month. <laughs> Here, here. Okay, quickly, you got all the top, you don't have to get around the clock. Everybody? All right, I'm Cody Wall here with AST for Productions, broadcast of the two CSA, CSSHL Game of the Month. I'm brought here with uh, Jack Smith of the Pilot Mountain Buffalo. Jack, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Uh, we've got a couple questions here just uh, for our viewers. So uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, who do you kind of model your game after? Um, I think guys like Elias Peterson, who are kind of more offensive threats, I think are good models for me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, who are some of your role models that uh, you look up to? Uh, obviously, you know, my parents. They've been very supportive of me, and they have to be people I look up to throughout my life, so yeah. For sure. Uh, you, you know, this is your first year with the program. Uh, how has that transition been uh, coming to the, the Prep Academy here? Uh, yeah, it's been really good. Uh, meeting a lot of new friends, great guys on the ice every day, so it's been real positive so far. For sure. So, uh, is this your first time away from home? Now, I guess, living in the dorms here, uh, living them by yourself, that's got to be a new experience as well. Uh, yeah, it's new. It's, it's been good. I'm liking it. But yeah, it's new. That's good. Uh, what are some goals you have for the upcoming season? Um, just have a good team season. That's, yeah, hopefully. All right. Uh, what's one of your most memorable moments uh, that you have playing hockey? Uh, that's a tough one. Maybe probably winning just TOC when we were younger. I thought that was really fun. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, one more question for you. What would you say one of your strongest features is in your game? Um, I think my skating's one of my strengths. So yeah, that's good skating. Definitely watching you out there today. Uh, that was one of your stronger features. Uh, we're gonna send it to a commercial here. I was uh, here with Jack Smith, and uh, I'm Cody Wall with AST Produ Productions. Uh, we're gonna send it to a commercial break here. Thank you. 
Okay, Cody, you need to be two minutes longer. You're on the Oh yeah. Come through, people, come through. Oi, oi, oi. Structures out, buddy. You're live. Back here on our ASTV Productions two hour pregame show for the CSSHL game of the month. Coming up here tonight at 7 p.m. on ASTV Productions between the Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy U17 male prep. Buffalo's taking on uh, the Edges School U17 prep team. I'm Graham Forsyth. I'm a reporter, a TV host, play-by-play -play commentator for ASTV Productions, joined by number six, a third-year defenseman of the Pilot Mound Hockey Academy U18 female prep Buffaloes, Devanna Ditto. And Devanna, starting off, the first thing I noticed that you were in crutches. Uh, what, what happened? I know you told me the story before, but I tell our viewers about what, uh, what happened to you, what injury you um, suffered. So I have uh, my patella is loose, so I had some fluid building up underneath my kneecap, and on Sunday it finally popped out, but um, I started physio, and I should be back on the ice for our next game, and hopefully back on the ice practicing next week. What was the, uh, you know, going through your mind when this happened, because something pretty serious like this popping up, not even happening in the game, happening after, uh, I'm sure you were devastated at the time. Uh, yeah, it was a little uh, scary. But um, I got to the hospital, and it was dealt with pretty well. So it's under control now, and I'll hopefully be back soon. That's good. Well, you said that you should be back for the team's next game, which uh, we still got a bit of time before that happens. But, uh, you know, how are you feeling now since it's happened? You know, you've had some time to recover and heal a bit. Um, I'm feeling pretty confident going into the game. Um, I think with a couple practices back, I don't see any changes in my game, and I should be pretty good going into it. So you're a third-year defenseman on yes, the Yes, I am. Been here since 2019-2020. Uh, take us through why you chose Small Town Pilot Mountain as that next place to play your hockey at. Um, well, I, before I was in an academy in Banff, um, and Pilot Mountain approached me at playoffs that year. Um, I came out here for a tour in April, and I immediately loved the place. I loved all the coaching staff and everything, and we get to go on the ice at night. There's always available, it's always available to come into the rink to do, put in extra work, um, and in a lot of places that always isn't an option. Yeah. So that was kind of my selling point for coming here. Yeah, that's great to know that you found a place that really lines up with your values and what you want to enjoy doing. And hey, if you're going to play hockey, uh, your favorite sport, uh, you know, why not do it where you love doing it here in Pilot Mound? Uh, throughout these three years, you got your season last season cut short. So you've only had really one full season with the team. Just talk about what that first year was like playing for the Buffaloes. Um, I really loved it. There was a lot of traveling, a lot of games. Um, I really loved the team that we had, the atmosphere. It was amazing. A lot of people, everybody was here and wanted to compete. Um, I really enjoyed it. That's, that's great to hear. And, you know, uh, talking about the, the team, the bonding with the girls, you guys see each other quite a bit on ice every day uh, in classes together. Just what's it been like getting to bond with the, the girls you've gotten to bond with throughout your years of being here at Pilot Mountain? Um, it's definitely been um, an adjustment, seeing the same people every day, 24-7. Um, but you begin to kind of become like family, so it's a pretty amazing thing. Um, lots of these girls I'll stay in contact with for a long time, and a lot of the girls are from where I live, so it's not like they're too far away. 
just in terms of people that haven't had a chance to watch you play, uh, how would you describe yourself as a player out there as a defenseman? Um, I'm usually a pretty offensive defenseman. Um, I like to skate the puck. Um, this year I've been focusing a lot more on having solid defense. Um, but yeah. yeah. Great to hear. It's going to be fun to watch you and your offensive abilities this year once you get back healthy in the lineup. Uh, but, you know, struggling a lot this team is uh, to start off this season. You know, a long season ahead. But what's the feeling been like uh, among the girls so far this year in terms of just the mindset in the room so far? Um, for some of them, it's been a little harder of an adjustment. We do have a very new team. Um, so being away from home, a lot of these girls, it's their first time. But um, honestly, everybody's had a pretty good attitude going into things. Um, we're all here. We want to get better. We know the things that we need to work on, and so do our coaches. And it's uh, every day coming to the rink and being consistent and working on it. And so far, everybody's been doing it. Last thing before I let you go here, uh, your final year in the academy, obviously looking to prove some things, uh, wanting to get out there and play. What are you looking to achieve the most here in this last season with the academy? Um, definitely moving on to university level hockey and getting um, some contact with those type of universities that I want to go to so I can have um, a post-secondary education with hockey. Well, good luck with that. Uh, I'm sure that some universities will be calling your name. And, yeah, uh, best of luck to you and the team going forward in the season. You continue to heal up, and uh, we'll see you out there very soon with the U18 Buffaloes. Right. Thanks for coming Thank on, you. Devanna. Devanna Ditto, number six of the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy U18 Female Prep Buffaloes. I've been your uh, interviewer for this segment, Graham Forsyth. We're going to send it to a commercial break now, and after the break, Theo and Carrie. We're going to throw it to Theo and Carrie coming up here on the ASTV Productions CSSHL Game of the Month to our pregame show. I've been Graham Forsyth. Yeah, Thanks I for watching. That. Put a screen up. That's my fault. Theo and Carrie live on the CSSHL show. Well, good afternoon, Carrie. Good to see you. I love the background. Tell me a little story about what's going on behind you. Hey, well, thank you a lot, Theo. I'm really excited about this. This is my first opportunity to be on the show and really looking forward to it. Well, I'll just stand back a little bit. You can take a peek. It was uh, 100 years of hockey uh, celebration, 1917 to 2017 was the NHL, uh, um, I guess, the celebration of the NHL. And I had the opportunity to go down and be a part of it with Ron Ellis at the Hockey Hall of Fame. So they gave me this banner. Uh, and I'm really uh, honored that I can be showing it to you on. It's got everybody. Like, you can name one player, Theo, and he's up there over that time frame of uh, 1917 to 2017. The Gretz. Uh, Johnny Bowers, a great one. The Gordie Howe, uh, John Bellavo, uh Rod Gilbert, who we just recently lost, of course. Uh, an incredible poster. You know what? I'll send you a copy. I would love to see it, Carrie. That looks fantastic. Probably got Toe Blake, Eddie Shore, some old-time hockey boys as well. Bobby Hall, the Jet, I'm sure is yes. behind you as well. You got it. There you are, buddy. Absolutely. No question. If Kevin, so, Carrie, one, tell like, us, I mean, throw Gordy on for what do you know about the CSSHL, and what have you been able to see so far from any of the play that you've been able to check out in the uh, recent month? Well, you know, I've been uh, blessed to be involved with hockey. As you know, I, I'm from Winnipeg. And, of course, uh, I enjoyed a, a fairly uh, uh, good career in the MMJHL and, of course, MJHL. And so I'm very uh, comfortable with Winnipeg and, of course, Pilot Mound. My uncle lives out there, so I know exactly where that is. I didn't know much about the Pilot Mound Hockey Academy, but I did get an opportunity to do some you know, due diligence, and then I watched a, a few of the games just recently. And what I find is this – type of league is so good in the sense that it's it's capturing players that maybe not won't end up in the uh, Western Hockey League or the Ontario Hockey League but they have an opportunity to gain a incredible uh, education and still play at a very high level of hockey and I think that's what the CSSHL represents out west and of course uh, some teams here in Ontario. 
it certainly so is good. an opportunity for players to gather the culture and the lifestyle that some would expect in a pre-junior program in terms of a hockey academy. The one thing that I know is more prevalent in the last four years covering the Buffalo is the travel schedule, the planning, but also how it is a student athlete prep program, not only at Pilot Mound, but most all programs involved in the CSSHL in terms of making sure school comes first, academics is foremost, athletics is working behind it, a 1A, 1B. But then it's got a travel schedule unlike any other for ages 15 to 18. And when you really think about that Bantam U17 age, you don't get those opportunities staying just within provinces and playing the odd showcase. The schedule is set so that you're visiting other provinces year round. And I truly admire that about the program and about the league all over Canada. Well, yeah, there's no question. I know uh, we'll chat with Kevin Goodwin about it, but the, the league itself is, is the, designed to make better athletes, better students, and better people. I think that's what the incredible thing is about it. Obviously, you, you 14, you 16, you 17, then, of course, you 18. Uh, this gives them an opportunity to have a, a chance to play high-level hockey without losing any time in, in their uh, scholastic uh, opportunities. And I think, you know, I didn't, uh, I got to grade 12, I passed to grade six twice. Uh, I got very blessed to go over to Europe and play for uh, 16 years. And I look back now, the only thing, if there is a regret, certainly is the fact that I didn't take my schooling as, as well. And I'll tell you what, if this opportunity would have presented itself when I was their age now, I would have definitely taken a deal because I understand that not everybody's going to be blessed at playing pro hockey. Not everybody's going to be blessed maybe to get, like myself and uh, another Winnipegger, Mark McKay, who I got to play in Germany with. Um, you may not get those opportunities. And Theo, the other thing is, is that you may... Uh, go into a professional career and God forsake you get hurt and everything changes. Education is so vital, so important, especially today for these young boys and girls. So I really commend the league uh, of what they're doing. And I love the fact that they have a good management system in place and that they think elite athletes, but elite students. And I love that. Kerry, we touched about the play on the ice. We've talked about the scholastic review. But even though, like, you and I have played this game for decades, you had a chance to go overseas. I went out east. I went down south to play and coach. The bonds you create in the dressing room are second to none and lifelong. And we heard Devanna in the recent uh, segment, in the previous segment, sorry, talk about how important it is to build that culture within the locker room and how you continue to discuss not only with players that have already graduated, but the players that are below you in age, and experience and building those bonds that are going to be lifelong. And I'm pretty sure you could tell stories of the, your first billet families out overseas. And I can tell you stories of the first guys I coached in LA or Atlanta, and we could go on and on. And the show could be four hours long. Uh, yeah. Carrie, well, talk to me a little bit about how important it is now, especially when you consider what we've gone through in a pandemic, how important it is to create the bonds, not only within uh, your own locker room, but also within the academic schooling area and also visiting potentially the other teams. I mean, going to the Okanagan and Penticton and, you know, rural Saskatchewan and all those other places outside Calgary, for example, getting to meet and see players that are doing the same thing you are. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, thank you for that, uh, bringing back some history. My first uh, billets in Germany, uh, the team was a very young team, so they had to put me up with a family for the first three months. Uh, the Grubensteins, Sophia and Dieter, uh, we've lost Dieter since, but Sophia is now back. She's German, but she lives in Africa. I stay in touch with her, obviously, with these things now, with Facebook and Twitter and Twick and TikTok. Uh, I've been able to continue it. And I think one of the greatest things that come from playing professional sport or any sport, it doesn't need to necessarily be uh, professional. It can be exactly what's happening here at the uh, CSSHL. 
you 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 gain these bonds with people that you mentioned it's lifelong. Uh, I'm 62, and I can tell you, I still talk to all of my buddies that I played junior with in the MMJHL. I come back to Winnipeg often, and you know Eric uh, Matheson's the world, Dave Weebs, uh, just great guy, Ray Savards of the world, and I think that's what's really important to take away from this. This is not just building good hockey players or good athletes. This is not just building people that are, are young leaders that are going to be able to go out in the world and if they don't play pro hockey, they become lawyers, doctors, uh, regardless of whatever they want to be, they can become. But more importantly, is those long-lasting friendships that you meet. And one of the other things I'd like to add, Theo, that you've mentioned, you know, the opportunity to travel. Uh, I, I went to Germany when I was 27. Yeah. I was one of those guys that kind of, you know, beer, uh, you Molson guys, beer drinker, yeah. McDonald food. I wasn't really cultured at all. And here I was giving an opportunity to go Somebody to Europe and become, I love red wine. I understand red wine. I eat inside. all different types of foods yeah. from all around the world. I all actually feel was there when the ball. Berlin Wall came down. The day, November 12th, 1989, I was in Berlin. And I'll tell you what, hockey has given me everything, and that's why I continue on doing it. So everybody that's listening here, whether you're a player, a coach, your dream is always there. I went over at 27, not ever thinking that I would do that. I won an Allen Cup with the Thunder Bay Twins. Somebody gave me a phone call. I thought my time was done, and there I was. Now what that's given me, Theo, is friends from around the world. Thank God we have these yeah. things that we can text and, and Facebook and keep them in, abreast. Uh, I have people in Australia, New Zealand, Africa, uh, all over the place. I'm not bragging about that. I know a lot of people. It's just I played 16 years in, in Germany, and it's given me this long life uh, friendships with so many. So I'll tell you what, make sure, and I'm going to say this to all the young students, everybody you meet, today. Treat with respect. Don't take this game for granted. It can change in a heartbeat. So please make sure you take every moment, enjoy everything about it because it's fantastic, Rod. Kerry, you couldn't have said it any better. And uh, I mean, when you talk about the landscape of this game and what it brings to us on the ice, but more importantly, what it brings us off the ice. It, I'm not going to say that it grooms every player, both male and female, the same. No but it certainly gives them the opportunity to explore, spread their wings, if you will, and give them that opportunity that may not have existed prior to. Uh, Pilot Mountain specifically, a lot of small town uh, areas are represented on all three teams now with the Buffalo, and even players from overseas still have come find a home to play with the Buffalo of a population of 800 in the town. And a lot of other places have a little bit larger population, but more importantly, it's giving the players that opportunity that may not have had that in the past and not squashing the dream, rather saying, you know what, we understand you have a goal and we're going to be that place that's going to give you that platform to get to the next level. And I think that springboard is what is effective for this program, these prep academies all across Canada because it gives them an opportunity to study, understand time management, and play a great game they love a lot more than people think. Yes, no question. Very well said. So, Kerry, I mean, talk about what we see in the last couple of weeks here and hope to see the rest of the regular season. How important is it for these players to get back to, for lack of a better term, a regular schedule so that they can play this game and go to school and return to that form that they've been groomed so Yeah, uh, a very good point, uh, Theo. I think it's really important to understand that uh, as, as a player and as uh, an educator now, it's really important that uh, kids have routine. And the pandemic has certainly taken that away from them, uh, not only for their sports, but also for their academics. And I think what we need to understand is Graham, that we are, we, are, we are so important uh, to help guide that well ship. Well for in their previous uh, years. Yeah. I, I know that you froze there for a second, Gordy. So, uh, uh, sorry. Theo, so uh, I was just saying that it's really important that they get back into a routine 
and it gives them an opportunity to understand how to time manage not only their school work but also their academics uh, along the way while they're you know obviously getting ready to play hockey or any sport and that that's that juggling act is sometimes very difficult so I think it's really important now that we're somewhat through this pandemic not only for the young boys and girls that are playing in these great academies but as important for the teachers for the coaches and for the parents to come back with a little bit of a normal life we hope that we see the past to this and that we're moving forward uh, I think that we're in a very good position and I think being involved in an organization like the CSSHL gives the, you a, an advantage because you've already got structure with your schooling and your athletics and so you can do it all at one facility i think it's marvelous now i know that uh we are frozen i've lost theo and i know that uh, we're coming back live uh with gordy welcome, welcome back, back to, to blackjack, blackjack scooter, scooter arena graham, graham forsyth here, here host, host on astv reporter and, and play-by-play -play play commentator joined by, by my good friend I mean, gordy tolson goalie coach, coach and marketing and director of pot hockey, hockey academy. academy and gordy uh, a, uh, lot, a of lot of shots on that for the goaltenders this weekend a lot of action uh talk about what the feeling's like around the goaltending right now in pot mom well the goalies are disappointed as many goals as we've gotten but we're we're starting to have a little bit of fun with that it's you know, it's not you know, it's life not and death, and death out, here. out here. It's, it's, it's hockey. hockey. And, and, and we're getting, we're getting bombarded, bombarded an awful, an awful lot. lot. And that's okay. That's okay. You know, that's, you know, that's, our, our guys, guys are, learning are learning to play under, play fire, under fire with a lot of with shots. shots. We're, testing we're testing their fitness, their fitness levels, levels et cetera, et cetera. So that's okay. And we also, we're testing their ability to just hang in there. And that's something that's coming as these guys mature and grow up. Uh, they're uh, they're going to have to find this anyway. anyway. They're going to play some teams, teams that, are, that, that aren't that are great, great, and and you're going to get beat sometimes. sometimes. And so, and so this is all part of it. And, and here we are. So, so, so there, you know, the the battle. The battle we, have, we have a, a, a new cry. It's, it's a battle cry, and it's just you know just stop and talk until we until we can. And that's and that's where we're at. So yeah, we're our spirits are high. We understand the deal, and we're and we're working hard to keep as many of those shots as we can. Uh, talking, uh, talking about, about just uh, the team they've been they've going, going up against, up against both, both the U-7s and U-15s this weekend, this weekend both, both going up against the Edge. Uh, how nice is it to have these boys experience playing a, a team with the, the caliber that the Edge just plays with? Well, the Edge has been around forever, and uh, they've done a great job forever marketing and, and bringing players in. And if you're in the Calgary area, you know, it's a big, Alberta's a big area. Uh, for, uh, and, uh, and a lot of great players. So at the end of the day, um, it's, it's wonderful, wonderful to play them. I just wish we were a bit closer to them. But but we're finding out how good you have to be to be a you know a true prep player and a true prep team. So and I congratulated their coaches. I saw them between periods and said, hey, way to go, good squad. Uh, we like playing you. Hopefully we can come uh, you know back later on and, and do the same back to you uh, maybe in, in January or February. Would be uh, nice to get them back at some point, right, Gordy? But only time will tell. Uh, you know, you're the marketing director of the academy. Talk about, you know, some of the development, some of the things that uh, is cooking up for the marketing team here at Pop Well, we've, we've got uh, you know, a, a great marketing team for, uh, for sure. Uh, with uh, Carson O'Connell and, and, and uh, Ginger, Ginger Collins, Collins and myself, kind of doing that work. work. Uh, we, uh, we, you know, we, we, we work, work very close with Game On Magazine, ESTV. You, you folks are wonderful. Uh, and uh, we've, yeah, we've lined up with KFGO and Fargo now, now to, to do some things there. there. Uh, we're, we're very, very uh, obviously we have a weekly article, article in the Sentinel, Sentinel Courier, Courier, which is the local newspaper, and, uh, and, uh, and, then, and then of course, of course we've, we've got a website, got a website that's that's second, second to none, to none. And, uh, and, uh, and there's, and there's lots, lots of information, of information for anybody, anybody interested in our programs, in, program, in particular on the recruiting side. side and we have, we have a, a, you know, a really neat, uh, uh, a new dormitory being built, and I'm going to let Thomas Collins, our guy, talk about that a bit later, but that's going to be unique, it's going to be neat, and it's going to be really big in a small town. So, so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we're looking forward, forward to that. that. Yeah, yeah Taz Collins going to be coming on later on, on in the show with uh, uh, this uh, or Cody Don't Show. He's going to be interviewing Thomas yet. Yeah, but uh, just, just talking, talking about, about it, the, the marketing, marketing, just how the role, role, you know, it's, you know, it's played. played. Of course, you guys, you guys are not only covered by us, but some other media outlets. Just speak about the pride you have in being the marketing director and seeing how the academy has grown to where it's at today. Yeah, the... The, um, the, um, the academy, you know, the, you know, the, the, marketing the marketing program, program is really, really um, 
sort of sort blossomed, of blossomed here, in here in the last couple of years, years. Not, 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 not because, because of me, me just because, because we've kind of looked really hard, hard at what, at we, what can we can do to do promote to promote, uh, to promote uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the teams and, and, the, and the, the, the town and, and most, most importantly the education and the, and the, and the hockey, hockey part, part of our, our program. program. And, and, and so, so, you know, the, you know the, Telling, telling people, people and getting, getting into, into people's, people's uh, homes and, 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 and into the, the hockey players' homes has really, really, really been fun. It's, it's, it's a hard job, job. Um, and, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a very personal, personal job, job, even though, though you know, marketing, marketing is kind of, kind of a, you know, a, a hit, hit here and a hit there, there on, on social, social media, media and, and, and getting, getting people to look at a website. Talking to people on the phone, talking to them in arenas is important, all those kinds of things. That's marketing, and so we're all working at it very hard. Our coaches work at it all the time. Certainly, I work. And, 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 the and, and the rest of the, the, the folks, folks here in uh, 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 our, our organization, organization the Pilot Mound. Mound. So, yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a big it's job. Big job. It's fun. And, uh, and, uh, and we're and getting, we're some, getting pretty some pretty nice, nice results. results. Well, well, like, like in hockey, hockey, it doesn't, it doesn't only take one player, player it takes a whole team. team. And it's great it's to great know to that you, along, along with other, other members in the academy, all come together to do what you guys do here. Thanks, Gordon, Thanks, Gordon for, for joining us joining here us on the ASTV production CSSHL Game of the Month to our pregame show. We'll talk soon for sure. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, Appreciate, Graham. That. Appreciate that. Graham Forsythe here from the STV Productions. Productions. We're going We're to going throw to it to a commercial break, break. Then, then we'll be then back we'll be with Theo and Carrie here on the ASTV Productions. CSSHL Game of the Month. CSSHL Game of the Month. Hey, we're back. How do we, uh, I see we got a little bit of a lag. I'm assuming I am back uh, with the CH, sorry, CSSHL president. Is it Kevin Goodwin? Uh, yes, it is Kevin Goodwin. My uh, official title is actually the chief operating officer, but uh, happy to be okay. here, Carrie, and uh, nice to nice to be speaking with you today. Well, I apologize for that. Listen, I, I want to commend you first on such a great organization. Uh, I was made aware of it about two weeks ago. I'm really yeah, good Rob, friends Rob. with Scott Taylor yeah. and, uh, from Game On Magazine. I'm sure you know Scotty. Uh, mm -hmm. I had the opportunity, Kevin, if Kevin, I don't know if you know it, but I played in uh, Manitoba. I was born and raised in Winnipeg, came through the St. Boniface Saints organization, played for uh, the St. Boniface Reals in the MMJHL, and also had a little bit of a stint uh, in the uh, um, Cash League, uh, far before your time, I'm sure, but uh, won an Allen Cup in Thunder Bay and had a chance to travel over to Europe. And what I see what you're doing in this organization is that you have a vision to establish a, 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 a league that gives players that may believe that education is as important as being a good hockey player. And that's what I love. Talk to us about that vision. You know what? I'll be honest, Kerry. Uh, that is my complete vision or our complete vision. Um, we want our kids and our student athletes to succeed, not just on the ice. Uh, we want them to succeed uh, within their communities. We want them to succeed being good sports. And we want them to see, succeed in their academics. And we understand that not everyone's an A student, for example. And we understand that academic potential is, are you getting all your assignments in? Are you getting extra help when you need it? Are you giving it your all in your classes? And if you are, that's your potential. Uh, but what we want these kids to do is to leave these organizations and whether it's moving on to the workforce or moving on to university or moving on to junior hockey or whatever their path may be, it's that they're going to be good people. They're going to know how to manage their time. They're not going to know how to deal with difficult situations because they receive so much support from uh, academic advisors in these programs. They receive so much support from their coaches and, and they're monitored constantly. They, you know, for, Programs that have kids in billet houses, those kids are constantly getting feedback from everyone. And, and that's what I love about it. The kids have all the support in the world to push it as far as they can. And it doesn't have to be hockey. Whatever their pathway is, that's what we want them to succeed at. 
Well, that's fantastic. As the chief operating officer, your responsibilities are plenty, of course. You look at the management aspect of it, uh, new initiatives, obviously the administration of the CSHL, but you also must love the game. Sorry about that, uh, tongue-tied. I, so with the CSSHL, um, there's got to be more than just that because you're, you love hockey. Uh, so talk to us about that role and then obviously being a hockey fan. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anyone involved in hockey has to love the game. It is, uh, it's not a typical nine to five job, as you well know, Kerry. Um, it is, uh, you're on 24 seven, 365. Things may slow down at per parts of the year, but you're always going. And, and that's something that uh, my wife and my family have learned over the years for sure. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so the great part about my role is, um, you get to see the product on the ice, which is fantastic. But again, I put so much pride into um, pushing our coaches and our programs to make the kids successful off the ice. You know, in, in my role, I'm dealing with uh, everything from talking from people to Hockey Canada to the different uh, re our provincial governing bodies like Hockey Manitoba, uh, right down to the ownerships of programs to everything. So. I'll deal with anything from discipline to league policies to AGM stuff. It's pretty much anything to do with anything. So it's, yeah. it's a pretty, well, uh, <laughs> pretty vast yeah. position for sure. Well, what's really cool is you just mentioned Hockey Manitoba. So I want you to make sure uh, next time you're talking to my good friend, Peter Woods, uh, please say hello to him. He does uh, great work. I Let love see Peter. What... He's a good man. He is, absolutely. Um, every time I get back to, to Winnipeg, I obviously have a chance to go and uh, eat some Chinese food with him. He loves Chinese food. Hey, listen, uh, talk to us a little bit more about the expectations of, of a family coming and getting involved with your organization, um, that they they want to see your their child. Uh, obviously, there's a balance that you've put in it. And I say it more than just being a good student, a good athlete, but also after it all, they have to be good people. So mm -hmm. talk to me about when a when a family comes in and talks to you and your organization, how you're able to show them that that's what the primary platform is, that you're never going to, we don't want you to escalate to 75% hockey and only 20%, um, you know, uh, education and then 5% being a good person. You mm -hmm. want to try and have that equilibrium. Yeah, so every one of our members are what's called a Hockey Canada accredited school or a Hockey Canada school with residents. And as such, they've gone through a very uh, vigorous, detailed um, approval process through, in your case, Hockey Manitoba and Pilot Mound. So Hockey Manitoba and Hockey Canada have looked at Pilot Mound, looked at their situation, reviewed their application, understood their beliefs and value systems, uh, their schooling aspect, how the day-to-day -day will look, um, you know, what the staffing will look like and all that stuff. So from my perspective, um, all these programs coming into our league have already been gone through a, a very rigorous process. Um, my job is to make sure that all of our programs are still on top of those value systems. And, and that's stuff that I push down right to the coaches. So it's really program by program, um, but I'm the guy that's obviously pushing our value systems. Our mission statement is to be national leaders in education-based hockey. So we want the kids to be successful. We want the kids to um, you know, push themselves and we want all of that. And, and that's what the programs are pushing, or not pushing, that's what the programs are informing the parents of. This is what makes this different. It, this is different than your regular minor hockey stream. All these kids that attend these schools have to go to the same school. So every single kid in Pilot Mound or the Rink Academy in Winnipeg or the St. Mary's Academy in, in Winnipeg, they all have to attend the same school. Um, and part of that is there's an education advisor that's monitoring every single student athlete that's involved with that program. And if a student starts to slip, they're held accountable. They, they miss training, they miss ice time, they get tutors, all of that stuff. So, you know, the other part that I love about the programs is, is most kids are home by supper time. Um, home every night, they have the time to worry about their academics. I'll use this as an example. I, you know, obviously live in a neighborhood and 
The other night, I, there was a 16 year old across the street. He's throwing his gear into the car at nine o'clock at night to go to hockey practice. And my kid's about to go to bed and he's 16. So, you know, he's, uh, he's going to do a lot better academically in the morning and he has the time at night to deal with his academic side of it. Uh, and it just, it creates a different lifestyle for these kids and these families. It, it really and truly does. Well, it gives them an opportunity to interact with the family too. I can only remember um, getting up at six o'clock in the morning, uh, skating out at the Wanaqua Community Club at minus 40. And then later that night, I'd be at the Maginot Arena at seven while my sister and brother were eating dinner with my parents. I was mm -hmm. on the ice. So it does create some conflict. But I'll tell you what, what you were doing, obviously, as the chief operating officer for the CSSHL is amazing. Can't thank you enough, Kevin. I look forward to following it more now that i understand exactly what you're doing i will be a big fan and be watching a lot of the games so thank you for being a part of our show today well great speaking with you carrie and uh, feel free to reach out anytime all right thank you take care Bye. back here at blackjack Stewart arena uh graham forsyth here for astv productions with the general manager of pilot mound hockey academy the man that makes it all happen Rod Collins. Rod, uh, a lot of excitement around the academy this year. I've talked to you about this before a bit, but we'll touch on it again. Adding a U15 male prep team, how huge was that for the academy to get this role in this season with that team? Well, that, that was huge for us, and it uh, not forced us into, but helped us uh, prepare by building our dorms and more space for kids. And down the road, we're looking at a U18 team, but we're very excited to have that U15 team because it'll also be a feeder for our older teams moving forward as the kids develop at that age. So we're quite excited with that to go along with our U17 prep. Just this academy, of course, you and your brothers uh, founded it. You uh, said that you, you know, saw the opportunity here in Pilot Moon to add, a, add an academy, you know, with the facility and stuff. Just looking at it after all these years with what's happened, of course, the U-17s winning a championship back in 2019-2020, uh, uh, the, the female team making it to a championship as well. Uh, just how, how pleased are you with how the academy has come to grow to what it is today? Well, we're very pleased. Uh, every year is a new challenge, obviously, but when I look at the wall ahead of us here, I see all the championship banners. So in the seven short years, or in our seventh year, we've been very successful, and uh, we're looking forward to developing this group of players on our three teams to become more competitive. We've started slowly, but that's uh, something that's happened before, so we just stick with our plan, our coaching, and uh, develop these kids and you know more importantly this year i really like our group of kids uh, they're good kids they're willing to learn uh, but they got good character good standing good students which is huge for us and i think that's a big thing we can always teach them the game but uh, sometimes we <laughs> run into a few problems with personalities but uh, no we're very pleased with this group and we look forward to getting more competitive as we move on Let's uh, talk about the people here at Pilot Mount. Of course, yourself being a general manager, you got Rick McConnell, head coach of the U17 team. Uh, you know, Brad Flatt, head coach of the U18 team. Kyle Nixon, head coach of the U15s. Just talk about the staff in general, uh, along with all the other people that make Pilot Mount Hockey Academy what it is. Well, the, the staff you just mentioned uh, are obviously uh, buy into my theory of, of coaching. And... Uh, it's about development. It's about development and being patient at times, which we've had to be. And so we're very, uh, we're, we're very pleased with our staff. And I, I, w I haven't been participating in too many practices. I was out this morning with the girls, of course. So we, s we really focus on skill development and uh, try and drive that competitive nature into them as well. And uh, s hopefully at, at that point that they'll make something of themselves and. Our record has, spoke, has spoken for itself in the past with all our girls going to college opportunities and several boys in junior every year. I think there's several playing in the Manitoba Junior right now, as a matter of fact. And uh, so that is our goal. And that's uh, if we can develop good character kids with good hockey skills, we've done our job. 
talking about the, the challenges of getting kids to want to come here because, of course, this isn't uh, your, your typical town, small town, Pilot Mound, Manitoba. What, what have been the challenges that the Academy has faced throughout the years of, you know, getting talent to come here and play for Pilot Mound, selling them on this idea of this Academy? Well, <laughs> that's why I'm standing here with you <laughs> for one reason. And, and uh, you know, promoting our program and getting the word out there. Um, we are a small town. We have all the amenities here, obviously, that we need. And uh, we have the facility, of course, yep. and, and the coaching staff. So we get the word out there. But more importantly is the players we develop. You know, uh, as we go on, these kids that have been here are going to spread the word for us as well. If we got a girl playing D1 down in Long Island, New York, the word is spread for us. We got a boy playing in North Battleford, Saskatchewan, the, the word spreads for us. So we, we, we work hard at it. Gordy works extremely hard at marketing our program for us. But a program has to sell itself. And it sells itself by being successful with kids moving on to brighter futures in the game. So moving forward here, what are, what are going to be some of the things that, you know, you, you'd like to see the academy kind of go into and in adding some things? Of course, you talk about one to add another U18 team, but talk about some other stuff potentially. Well, obviously, and I think my brother Tammy's going to speak on the dorm side of it. We're, we're putting a, a lot of money into an extravagant dorm uh, dining lounge area, <coughs> which will serve us well. Yeah. And obviously, I think we have everything pretty much in place here. We have buses, we have travel, we have great cooks, we've got great food. We try and keep a nutritionist, uh, nutritional uh, uh, menu for our kids and, and treat them like their family, which is huge for us. They're not just another kid in here where we're putting a number behind them to pay the bills. We want each one of those kids to be successful. and. Uh, I've been at Shattuck, and I've been at Notre Dame, and I've been at Wenatchee, and uh, it seems like uh, the masses pay for the few that win, and uh, yeah. I don't care for that too much. Well, family, developing players, just among some of the great things that this academy does. Rod, thanks for joining me here on the CSSHL Game of the Month pregame show here on ASTV Productions. Nice to talk to you. Thank you, Grant. We're going to now go to a pre-recorded interview that I had a chance to do on Thursday. I sat down with former Pilot Mound Hockey Academy U17 captain and now alumni Brett Deterren. Brett is now in OCN, playing for the OCN Blizzard in the MJHL. I had a chance to catch up with him, ask him a bit about how OCN is going and mostly about Pilot Mound Hockey Academy. Enjoy. Joining the broadcast now on our CSSHL Game of the Month coverage is Pilot Mound Hockey Academy alumni. Brett Deterren. Brett plays for the OCN Blizzard now in the MJ Jollies. Joining me on this uh, Thursday evening, two days before the game that we're uh, going to be covering tonight on ASTV Productions. But Brett, how's it going? Nice to have you here. How have things been with you and OCN this season? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, things have been good. Uh, it's good to make the switch to junior hockey finally, and uh, uh, I think I'm where I belong right now, and uh, I'm having a great time. You know, moving into Pilot Mound now, you've had a chance to have a career there where you ended up winning the championship, had a chance to captain that team. Looking back at it now, you know, with you being a year removed from the program, being an OCN now, what is it like for you now reflecting uh, on your time uh, that you spent with the Pilot Mound Hockey Academy Buffaloes? I think it, I think, uh, it really helped me for junior because, uh, first of all, the moving away aspect, um, it wasn't such a big transition for me to be able to move away from home because I'd done it for three, free, three previous years. And uh, uh, just uh, skating every day, I'm used to that. So it wasn't that big of a deal when we're skating sometimes twice a day here. So uh, I think that made that switch a lot easier just coming from doing that for three years now. And uh, the working out, we've been working out on our own for a couple of weeks now. And uh, it's great to have a gym, like Pilot Mountain had a gym and we got to use it whenever we needed to use it. So uh, keeping on the workout regimen too. So the, the routine is very similar. Uh, 
practice wise and uh, game wise. So uh, I like to keep my game day routine the same. And I think I got a good routine from being at Pilot Mound, knowing what to do away from home. So uh, I think that helped me out quite a lot. And uh, for the playing aspect, I, I think I really found out what kind of player I was there playing so many minutes and uh, coming from a team that we were a winning team. I think I have the experience of knowing what it takes to win and hopefully I can bring that to the table when I come to play for this OCM Blizzard this year. You know, for the people that aren't quite as familiar with uh, Palomon Hockey Academy, of course, ASTV Productions has been covering them for a very long time now. But for the people, you know, turn, tuning into this broadcast, maybe parents out there looking to send their kids to an academy, why do you think Pilot Mound should be that next place for, uh, you know, parents to send their kids to continue their development in hockey? Okay, yeah, so Pilot Mound is a great community. It's a one of those communities where everybody is really bought like buying into the program and everybody supports the team and the school supports the team and it's not a very big community so it's not that hard to get used to and settled in and uh the program that the collins have built there uh, still building they're not done they have uh teams that are being added to the organization just this year and i think if if you want to send your kid away somewhere where they can develop and learn to be young men and women uh, growing up playing hockey and hopefully getting somewhere in the future. I think it's a great decision. Uh, it's well worth it. And I think it helped me in the, in the long run. So good idea. Talking about values, of course, you know, talking about responsibility as well as some other things. Uh, talk about the values that were instilled in you during your time in Pilot Mound Hockey Academy in terms of how those values really helped shape you into the hockey player you are now. I'd, I'd say I came into Pilot Mound not knowing exactly what kind of hockey player I was. and uh, I have never moved away from home before, so... Uh, thing going there just made me a bit more responsible and uh, kind of more knowing of what I need to do and kind of take responsibility for my actions and for the playing hockey side of things I think just going there and becoming a better hockey player is now what I've done and I, I've been through that program so all I can do is build off that and uh, hopefully keep climbing up the, the hockey ladder become pro hockey player one day uh you know of course you, you don't know the ins and the outs of the opposition the edge in this game tonight but just from your experience of playing against them in the past uh what would you you know recommend what would your advice be to the players in the game for the u17s going out tonight in terms of them going for that w against the edge i would say uh play like you can and uh, stick to the game plan uh don't try to do too much just because of what this team has been talked up about uh, just play hard play physical play fast and move the puck because if you're moving the puck you'll open space and create space for uh, opportunities to to be born and uh, I'd say just come out and play hockey man From Brett to Taryn Bass, a guy that's won a championship for the U-17s. Just go out and play hockey, boys. That th that's what they'll be looking to do tonight in that third matchup in the CSSHL game of the month here on ASTV Productions between the Buffaloes and the Edge School U-17 prep. We're going to throw it to a commercial break, and coming back, we're going to hear from Tammy Collins about the new expansion in the dorms here on ASTV Productions. The CSSHL, a game of the month, to our pregame show. Welcome to Pilot Mound Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mount Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on-ice coaching propel our students to the next level, both mentally and physically, in a professional environment.
Welcome back to ASTV Productions of the CSSHL Game of the Month. Uh, I'm here with Tamis Collins. Uh, Tamis, you're uh, in charge, the chairman of the board for Pilot Mound here. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm chairman of the board for now. Um, I am a shareholder with, along with my brother Rod and brother Doug and their families. Uh, that's the ownership and they put me in the chair position, I guess, for now. All right. Uh, we were talking a little bit about these new dorms that are going to be going up. Uh, tell me a little bit about that uh, process. Yep, we're uh, we're building a huge building in, in the size of Pilot Mound area, 7,300 square foot uh, building, and that's only phase one. There's three more phases after that, and it's a common area. It uh, consists of a full basement, a full main 7,300 square foot main floor, and then a uh, upper floor as well with a mezzanine type of thing that looks around the uh, common area, which is going to be quite attractive and quite uh, inviting for, for young hockey players. Sure thing. Uh, how far is the construction so far on this new building? We're just in the middle of digging the basement uh, right now, so it's going to be a winter project, which works well for farmers and other people, tradespeople in the area. Uh, and that's what we, our goal is, to use all local people to build it so winter time works good for us for sure always using uh, using the community that kind of supports you is always good to kind of support them as well um, so th so far pile mound has been off to a bit of a slow start uh, how do you see the team kind of growing as the season progresses well that's what we're all about that's that's what this academy is all about it's about taking players and no matter what their level is is making them better and making them to be the best they can be. Not, not only in hockey, but, but in school and, and as a human being too. So if they struggle at the start, we're gonna judge our accomplishments by, by how good they are at the end and how they progress and, and the speed at which they progress. So we're, we're fine with what's going on. For sure. And uh, what kind of separates Pilot Mound from some of the other prep schools uh, around the league? It, it's, it's, it's extremely simple. Um, and nobody else can duplicate it. And, and it's, we care. We care about every individual. We care about every young player that comes into our program. We care about how well we progress them in hockey, where we take them to, to the next level, where they go after they're done. We care about their schooling. We care about them as a human being. By, by, by Christmas time, we have a bunch of new kids this year. By Christmas time, I will even know, and I don't have much involvement in the academy day to day, but I will know every child that's, that's with us. So the, the difference between, we don't treat our kids like pieces of meat. They are human beings, and we're gonna create better human beings when they leave here. That's the difference between us and other for-profit Hockey academies. For sure. Kind of sounds like you guys really live by uh, the kind of opening uh, values that the CSSHL kind of had with, you know, not just developing players, but you kind of sounds like you guys here want to uh, develop human beings too. You want to raise uh, good, good people. So that, That's right. And, and we have the environment to do that here. Uh, the small town environment where everybody's watching these kids everybody respects these kids in the in the whole community so th that takes a small town to make a child well we're we providing the small town right so um what kind of amenities uh we're going to dive back into the dorms a bit there uh what kind of amenities are all going to be uh in in the new uh building well mostly the, the amenities are what we're building right now is called the common area so it it'll have um the kitchen, of course, in the eating area and, and the mezzanine that's around it and uh, offices and stuff. And then later on, we're going to be building the sleeping quarters and stuff. But it, it's going to be an environment that um, the eating area, for an example, is going to be nice and bright and clean and neat for eating. And then we could take it right into a, a dance and we'll maybe have prom dances there or something. Uh, we will have. Um, so it's going to be a multifunctional good thing for young people. Right. That uh, sounds like a good, good uh, program we're trying to build here. Uh, 
this these dorms this kind of as a uh, preemptive to expand even more yet I know we added the u15 program this year uh, they're kind of a little bit more for plans to expand yet more absolutely um, so the, the the entire plan uh, of these dorms is to actually house uh, six teams uh, right now we're currently three and, and of course whenever you build you have to build for full expansion right um, and so we do hope at some point that we get to say that around that six team level um, and that building that we're building right now will accommodate that and that's our goals uh, whether it happens in the next five years or in the next ten years I'm not sure but we, we always want to grow we always want to get better uh, and and really what what we're doing is you know as you I should full disclosure I'm a, I'm a farmer I'm an electrician I'm a hotel business owner I, I got into this because my my brother had a passion for young people and making them better hockey players and and that passion is what we're doing in it and it's such a feel-good business if, if we call it a business it's a feel-good business because you're doing something really good for young people and making them better people so it, it's it really tugs on your heart you don't need to make money at this this business you just need to make good good, good. kids better for sure uh, it seems like the program really is uh, you know there for its players uh, that's something you always kind of want to uh, especially while we're showcasing pile of mound here today uh, you know that's something you want to really drive home uh, is just kind of the community feel uh, with this team and just feels like uh, kind of like a family feels like everybody uh, right from the, the upper management uh, you had said that your brother was uh, part of the board as well and yep. uh, you know kind of feels like the whole family uh, atmosphere works its way down uh, from the top up. It is. It is totally a uh, full family. My uh, son-in-law, he looks after the spring hockey program. Uh, my daughter is involved. She's got six, seven bullets at her house right now. She's involved with the day-to-day -day operation. My, my two daughters went to uh, schools before and were away from home, so they communicate with these kids and help the the homesickness, help the nutrition ideas. So many things that we are involved in as a as a community and as a family to make this a better place for these young people to be. For sure. Uh, let's see. The the community aspect to it too is is a, is 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 pretty good um we, we we started this because we had a beautiful rink and it it wasn't used enough so okay the hockey academy fits that you rents a lot of ice uh the school was lacking enrollment okay well there's another good fit so the whole thing whether it's community school arena doing things for young kids um is a win 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 for the whole community and for the people that we bring into our program for sure it sounds like uh, kind of growing the community uh, from the, the school out uh, will help you know the town is itself kind of can help it grow uh, with some of the businesses having more uh, parents coming in to watch their kids uh, you know can help stimulate some of the economy and uh, you know uh, it sounds like we got a great program here and mm -hmm. uh, want to thank you for coming on today with me and telling me telling us a little bit about uh, the new upcoming dorm plan uh, we're going to throw it to a commercial here. I'm Cody Wall with ASTV uh, here with Tamis Collins. Uh, thank you again, Tamis. You're welcome. At Collins Hotel, we have you and your family's comfort in mind. Relax in one of our 16 suites featuring king or queen size beds and 36 inch TVs. Suites also include a mini fridge and other kitchen appliances to make your stay as comfortable as possible. During your stay in Pilot Mound, visit Weiser's Restaurant, our attached family-friendly restaurant and bar. It is the perfect location to host group meals, dine with the family, or unwind after a hockey game. Come in and meet our friendly staff, offering daily specials on food and drinks, wing night Wednesdays, buffet Fridays, and multiple TVs to watch the game. Weiser's is the place to be. Collins Hotel and Wiser's Restaurant and Bar.
right, welcome back to Pilot Mountain Manitoba here. Uh, we are going to be throwing it to an interview, a pre-recorded interview that my colleague Graham had done with uh, Edge Coach, uh, the U17 prep. Uh, I hope you enjoy. You're good. Here with Rob Miller, head coach of the Edge School U17 prep team playing here this weekend in Pilot Mountain. Uh, coach, just uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, who is Coach Rob Miller? Uh, well, um, kind of lifelong coach right at the moment. Uh, finished my hockey career and uh, missed being around the boys and, and traveling and that, that sort of thing. And so, you know, got an opportunity with one of my former coaches to step in and be an assistant coach at a young age and, and work with some Bantam kids and just loved it. And, you know, being around them every day and uh, teaching them and, and working with them has been uh, it's been a dream all along, you know. It's been it's been a great experience. So just progressed through the years, and uh, lucky enough to have landed the job at the edge, uh, working with another great group of kids. Talk about just the opportunities this academy offers to the players out here. Uh, edge definitely has a tremendous program, um, unbelievable facilities. So when I toured, and, uh, you know, I was interviewing to see the workout facilities. Uh, the ice is right there. Schools, uh, amazing, uh, amazing facility. So it's kind of as a recruitment tool, especially like you know the kids are in awe when they come. They they see the workout, the gym that they have, and everything there. So it's it's uh, it's an excellent experience, definitely to, uh, to be part of. What's the schedule like in a week to week, day to day type of basis? Uh, I, what I what's blown me away is the dedication of the athletes. Mornings we're in the gym at seven, uh, practice eight forty-five. Uh, they're off there. They're at the school. Uh, a lot of them will come and, and work out in the gym after after school ends. So uh, hectic day, uh, definitely. Uh, yeah, add in the travel <laughs> of, of bus rides and plane rides, and it's a definitely takes a dedicated student to to follow through on their schoolwork as well. So uh, very impressive. And what's been impressive is you guys' team performances so far this weekend against the Pod Mount Hockey Academy U17 male prep team. A 9 to nothing win yesterday and a 9 to one win today, uh, this morning, or in the game I covered this morning. Uh, just what's impressed you so much about this team so far this year from what you've seen from this group of kids? Uh, we've, we've got a strong offensive talent, uh, very good move, puck moving defensemen. The last trip, uh, we didn't really get a good example. Those were our first couple of games. So the two games here have, have been good to see just the cohesiveness, uh, the you know the camaraderie that the team has already. Uh, I joined the team kind of late, so it was formed, and, and so to step in and, and try to figure out all the personalities, it's been a good weekend away to, to see. Uh, I'm happy with actually both teams of discipline. You know, games, games of that caliber, they get up high us. You never know what can happen, but I think both teams have been very respectful out there, and it's been hard fought. I don't think the, the score reflects, you know, overall the games that have happened. Well, we got another uh, one coming up here for our CSSHL game of the month tonight between your team, the Edge School U17 Prep Boys, taking on the Hotline Hockey Academy U17 Male Prep Buffaloes. Thanks for taking the time, Robin. Thank you. Have a good night. That was Rob Miller, head coach of the Edge School U17 Prep Hockey Team, of course, there here in Pilot Mound, Manitoba this weekend to take on the Pilot Mound Hockey Academy U17 Mel Prep Buffaloes. Graham Forsyth back here with Cody Wall and Seth Rock. And boys, uh, we're just over an hour from game time here, the big CSSHL game of the month coming out up between Pilot Mound and and the edge, uh, you know, what do you think the excitement is going to be like, you know, from just the fans in the stands getting to see this game tonight? Uh, well, I think with extra m attention to this game, it will be, uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how, many p how much uh, notoriety this game gets around the league uh, with us broadcasting it. Uh, you'd like to see some of these guys get a little extra attention uh, throughout the league. Oh yeah, it's always good for the players to get that extra attention, like you said. And for having fans in the stands, we haven't had them in a while. And when you can 
it's when you see all that and you score a goal in front of a huge crowd, it just always feels so good. Even if they're booing you, it's still there's fans there and the atmosphere is there and it just feels great in general. Yeah, this morning I noticed, I took a look around the crowd, I forgot to mention it in the game, but there was quite a few people here. Uh, early morning watching the game, so, you know, Saturday night, you're in Pilot Mound, Manitoba, what better way to end off your Saturday evening than come and watch the local hockey, hockey team, the Pilot Mound Buffaloes, the U-17s. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about it so much, about Pilot Mound's struggles this weekend, but more of the edge's strengths. Uh, a lot of great players on that edge team. What are, who are some players that you guys are going to be looking for to continue to put up numbers for this edge team in tonight's game? You know, uh, looking to see some of the same guys uh, that were leading the team last year. Uh, caught, uh, not last year, I apologize. Uh, last night uh, and this morning. Uh, Koch was, uh, he was a key player for the edge in uh, their, both their victories, uh, ma managing to get a number of points. styles and ways he plays the game. He has all these little things that make him better, and especially his offensive awareness is something you really need to pay attention to when watching him play. Yeah, not only Koch, but Callahassen, the captain, uh, Ashton Gallagher, uh, the list goes on and on for the edge, the type of players that they have. But, you know, talking about Pilot Mound, uh, we, we've seen some good things, but in very short sample sizes from them this weekend. Uh, I talked to Rick McConnell earlier today, and he said that he hasn't liked this team's, uh, you know, effort level at times this weekend so far. In a game like this where he got such a short turnaround, like last night, but doing it again tonight, deja vu, a word that I feel like we've been using so much on the network. You know, as a coach, as a staff, as a team, how do you truly come back and come out to play against a team that's blown you out already twice this weekend? Uh, you know, the biggest thing is not to think about it as, uh, you know, turn the page on on last night and, and this morning's game. Uh, that'd be the biggest thing is, you know, it's a new game. Uh, the score is 0-0 zero, zero to start. Uh, really, nobody has an advantage. Uh, it'll be just, uh, you know, start fresh. Forget about yesterday's game. But uh, also, you know, learn from some of the mistakes that uh, had happened yesterday. But yeah, uh, overall, uh, maybe want to forget some of the, the outcome, but just kind of learn from some of the mistakes. Yeah, for me, it's, you know, Pilot Mountain, I think, needs to come out a little more aggressive. We know there's some guys on there that can really throw the body. Like, I've mentioned him a few times in a few of the games I've done with you, Graham, Izzy, Amy. Yep. He can really throw the body. He's one of those guys, I think, in a game with a really skilled team. Oh, like 100%. Is, yeah. Yeah, you look to those guys who can really, you know, throw the body and show physical side, and then your offensive players can come in and score once those guys have been kind of neutralized by some of your stronger players and defensive players. Well, you had mentioned Izzy Amy. Uh, I remember earlier this morning, he was uh, he was definitely playing physical out there. He had uh, thrown that big reverse hit uh, right in front of us uh, in our f earlier broadcast and looked for him to probably do a little bit more of that. Uh, he is a, not a small guy. Uh, he's got a wide frame and definitely has uh, some power to throw th his body around. And if you guys were wondering why I was chuckling a bit, it's just we got so many people trying to get by here, ducking down the cameras, so I wasn't laughing at what these boys were saying. Uh, great insight, as always. But one thing that I think Pilot Mountain needs to find is that second gear, because when they've gotten their momentum, it looks like the edge uh, kind of, you know, backed off a bit, and then the edge put into gear again. How is Pilot Mountain going to respond after, you know, giving up a goal? Are they going to punch it into that second edge? Are they going to find another gear? It's all questions that I think are going to be up in the air tonight for Pilot Mountain. I think something that they also want to improve on is, you know, continue com to compete for a full 60 minutes. Yeah. For sure, Graham. Uh, you know, they're going to want to keep all the momentum that, you know, little bits of momentum that they have uh, garnered over the, the last two games here. Uh, they're going to want to think back on that and, and try to build off of it. Uh, one thing I know we had kind of talked about uh, was they looked like they were kind of pressuring it up the boards, but uh, they'll be looking to kind of avoid some of that.
Also, since it's their second game today, I do believe that they're gonna. Both teams are gonna be kind of tired. We're not gonna see a hundred percent skating out there. Obviously, they're gonna be giving it their all, but they're not gonna be at their max capacity that they were earlier today when they played. So I think Pilot Mound should really try to take advantage of that, since you know they may not have as skilled players yep. as this edge team, but maybe really, really, really press and, like I said before, play that physical style. You know. Uh, play hard on the forecheck in your own zone. Make sure you're covering it up and covering up all angles. And just make sure you're out there stopping all their players. Well, boys, we're going to leave it there for Pilot Mountain because we do need to save some content for the pregame show here coming up uh, before the game tonight. Of course, that game going at 7 p.m. But let's talk about some upcoming games, Cody. Uh, what do you got for us, the upcoming games here on the network? Uh, so it looks like we got a Pemna Valley Hawks game uh, on October 23rd there at 5.15. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, we have a game with the Swift Current Wildcats on October 20th at 8 p.m. Uh, They're going to be versing the Rebels, uh, followed in the next days with a uh, Pemna Valley Hawks game on the 23rd. I knew that one was coming up soon. <laughs> uh, that game is going to be versus the Avros at 515 in Morden. And then it uh, looks like we got another Wildcat game on that same day at 745 versus the Bears. Uh, and then to f close out the weekend, uh, we got a pair of games. One first, uh, the Wildcats play the the Bears at 11:15 on the 24th, followed up by uh, the Pemina Valley Hawks playing the Inner Lake Lightning at 2:30 on the 24th. Well, lots of exciting coverage coming up here on the network. I can't wait for the games. I'm going to do play-by-play -play for those. Of course, not the Swift Current game because they're out in Saskatchewan. I won't make that road trip, obviously. But uh, the games, the Pemina Valley Hawks. Uh, we, we got some kids running by here now, uh, getting in the way of the shot. We're going to close it off now. Uh, to everyone that's tuned in to the CSSHL Game of the Month two-hour pregame show, myself, Graham Forsyth, along with Cody Wall and Seth Rock, want to thank you for tuning in. We talked to a lot of great people, talked to the great people here at Pilot Mountain, and even heard from the coach from The Edge, as well as the uh, commissioner from the CSSHL, Kevin good one uh we're going to sign off now this concludes our two hour pregame special here for the cssHL game of the month on astv productions we'll see you at puck draw for the cssHL game of the month tonight against the pot mount hockey academy u17 male prep buffaloes taking on the edge school u17 prep graham forsyth along with cody wall and seth rock signing off now see you guys soon